What is up guys, PK here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing something completely unrelated to everything I usually make videos about. Get over it. Now, some of you may know, but I in fact am born and raised in the small Scandinavian country known as the Shire. I'm in Denmark. Same thing really. It's actually a funny story. I once had to explain to an American he asked where I was from, right? I was in the United States. And I'm not trying to put you all in this category. Let me just say that. But I, uh, I told him I was from Denmark. And he, he replied something like, oh, that, that's that's northern state of Germany, right? And I was like, bruh. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so in an attempt to explain to him what Denmark was, I was like, if you imagine, right? that the, the world is Middle Earth, then Denmark would be the Shire. <laughs> True story. Because um, it's essentially all just, you know, hills, grasslands, windmills. That's pretty much all Denmark is. But on a more serious note, in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that I absolutely despise. Politics. To some degree. Don't, don't go away. Trust me. There will be a total of zero politically aligned messages in this video. Yay! I promise. Okay. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the Danish Prime Minister, the current Danish Prime Minister, named Mette Frederiksen, who, uh, if you ask me, is an absolute cunt. But that's just me. Now, what this is really about is a scandal that I thought some of you guys might find interesting. And really, it's all about accountability more than anything, which is something I think we can all get behind, right? Now, the year is 2020. <laughs> Oh, essentially, we all know what has happened. Pandemic, right? And there was a variant of this known as Cluster 5 that apparently originated or was traced to a bunch of mink farms in the northern part of Yulan. They are scattered across Denmark as such. There's roughly 1,100 of these mink farms. And again, on a completely different side note, I absolutely do not condone or like the whole fur industry. I think it's horrific. And so the fact that the industry is gone, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I honestly don't mind. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about the absolute incompetency of certain Danish politicians, including our current prime minister. Now, the reason I think she should be in jail is as follows. She knowingly and willingly gave an illegal order to execute 17 million mammals, destroying an entire industry overnight, right? And then retroactively, three days later, was like, oh, oh, let, let's, let's change the law, right? You know, kind of like if I, if I ran a red light in my car, right? And like, ah, I'm sorry, officer, I'm sorry. But as you can clearly see, the light is green now. Doesn't work that way, right? <laughs> And so, so here's the basis of the story, right? So in, in 2020, at a press conference, she gave this order that essentially all of these main farms had to put down, I guess it's the polite word rather than execute, uh, put down all of their minks, not just the sick ones, but also the healthy ones, both on farms that had sick ones, and not, but also on farms that only had healthy mink, right? They all had to be put down. And it was then found out later that that was illegal. It went against our version of the constitution, what we call Grundlov, the ground law, I guess, or something. I don't know if you can translate it like that. Doesn't matter, right? It went against our constitution and uh, to, to do that. So it was not within her juri juridical rights, I think is the way to put it. Not entirely sure about that, but uh, I think you get what I mean. To give that order, and she knew about that when she gave the order, right? That, that's the big sort of talking point here. So, but it gets worse, right? Okay, so everyone puts down these minks, right? That destroying a billion dollar industry overnight. So that is what it is, right? And then four days later, as I said, she retroactively changed the law so that it technically was legal, right? Then it gets worse, right? Because now we've put down 17 million minks. So what do we do now? 17 million minks, that's a lot of, that's a lot of minks, right? We bury them. And everyone's like, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Maybe we should just do an ecological report, you know, investigation and report to check, is it really a good idea to bury 17 million mink? This seems like a lot of mink, right? Uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. We need to act fast, bury them. And everyone's like, but, but hold on, no, bury them, bury them. Okay, so they buried them under one meter of soil in what is essentially a mass grave, right? I believe it was something like 21 
thousand tons of a mink mass, as they called it. <sighs> so, well, what happened then? Allow me to quote here from a, uh, an article. Since the mass slaughter, hundreds of mink carcasses have emerged from their graves. Buried in shallow pits, uh, pits and trenches in the western Denmark, the dead min minks were pushed out of the ground by gas emitted from their decomposing bodies, leading to even more outrage and concern. Obviously not very nice to live right next to a place where, like, dead minks are just emerging from the ground, right? So that's obviously not optimal. Police in West Jut uh, Jutland where several of thousand minks were buried in mass graves on a military training field, have tried to counter the macabre phenomenon by shoveling extra soil on top of the corpses, which are in a one meter deep trench. Adding to the popular concern, local media reported that the animals may also have been buried too close to lakes and underground water reservoirs, prompting fears of possible contamination of ground and drinking water supplies. That's literally what you were warned. That's literally what you were warned about before you made it. It's literally what you were warned about. Okay, so burying the mink mast has cost approximately 55 million Danish kroner. That's something like roughly, give or take, 10 million dollars ish. And the Danish Food and Environmental Ministry expects to be able to dig them up and burn them for another 72 million Danish kroners. Again, something like 14, 15 million uh, dollars. But the real cost of the whole ordeal has exceeded 300 million Danish kroner, aka something like 50 to 75 million dollars. Danish MPs agreed later on Monday night to give mink farmers up to 19 billion Danish kroners, aka 3.1 billion dollars, to recoup losses for the up to 17 million animals culled and for the future loss of earnings in a deal judged by many to be generous to an industry already in decline. Trusting government's COVID-19 strategy has fallen 76% in July to 56% last week, according to an Aarhus University study. So, so, what has been the consequence of all this? Well, essentially the single only real repercussions this whole ordeal has had is that a guy named Mr. Mon Jensen, who was the uh, agricultural minister, has es essentially acted as a sacrificial lamb for our prime minister. But as I said, what is this video really all about? It's all about accountability, okay? I am sick and tired of politicians, not in Denmark specifically, just all over the world it seems these days, to be held to a lower standard than the general population, okay? These are supposed to be the best of us. Like, I know they're not, but they're supposed to be, right? If anything, we need to hold them to a higher standard than the general public. Is that such a crazy idea, right? If anything, a politician, a person elected to be in charge of a country, when they break a law written in the constitution knowingly, and this has been proven and verified, okay? How are you not at a bare minimum tried for this is beyond, it baffles me. Like you, you can think what you want about her as a prime minister, uh, the party she's behind, her politics, whatever. I'm not gonna get into any of that. That's completely irrelevant. Accountability has to matter in a judicial uh, country, like in a country with a court system. I forgot the technical term, doesn't matter. If anything, if found guilty of a crime whilst you are in office, you should be punished doubly. Okay, if anything, it should be double punishment. It should not be easier to get away with things in power. It should be harder. Now, I know that is a lot harder to, to actually enforce in principle, uh, in practice than it is in principle, but, not the, but this is a clear and cut case of us knowing that she knew that she was giving an illegal order, right? And you could make the case here, okay? Let, let's try to, let's make a hypothetical here. Let's say, okay, well, PK, maybe she did the right thing for the right reasons which of course you might agree or disagree with. But for the sake of argument, let's just say that this is indeed the case. Let's say she did the right thing, she did it for the right reasons, this prevented a spread of a worse uh, variant of this cluster five COVID virus. Let's say that's true, right? Even so, even if you, if you do the right thing objectively, and we could prove again that this was the right thing to do if she hadn't acted immediately, this was the reason she did it, even so, at a bare minimum, that's not for you to decide. That is for a judge 
or a jury to decide in court at a bare minimum you need to be tried. You broke the law, period, end of story, that there are circumstances under which you can break the law and still be acquitted even though it's proven, oh, he, this guy punched someone else in the face, that's illegal. Oh, by the way, the guy he punched in the face was robbing a bank, okay, you're free to go, right? But that has to be determined in the court of law. You don't just get to get away with it. Uh, it's not like you didn't punch anyone in the face. You did. It's on camera. You punched him in the face, right? So, like, it just it baffles my mind. And really, the reason I'm making this video, because I absolutely love my country of Denmark. I think it's an amazing country. I'm proud to be Danish. I'm proud to live here as much as I could imagine a bunch of other people are to live in whatever country they might live in. And we've been glorified a lot in the international media from time to time. But I just wanted to let you guys know that even in the country of the Shire, you're not completely and entirely free from the disease that is absolute political incompetency. Maybe in the future we shall do more videos about Denmark. Maybe in a slightly more positive light. Like maybe amazing Danish inventions or 10 reasons why Denmark is definitely better than Sweden. Definitely gotta get on that one. Anyways, <laughs> that's all I had for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do like your Sweden. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out, motherfuckers.